okay so good afternoon all of you so today is our first class of cm1 actuarial mathematics and uh, <coughs> talking about the subject usse pehle <coughs> i like to tell you something about myself i am praveen patwari and i have been teaching uh, the subjects of uh, cm1 since the last 5 years i have cleared 12 actuarial examinations and i am a qualified chartered accountant as well i did my graduation from uh, st xavier's college kolkata <coughs> and uh, i'm very keen on uh, learning new and new things and currently i'm preparing for my last three examinations which i'll be appearing in this march attempt from iai okay so this is a short intro about myself what i would like to tell you about this course is since this is the first exam for most of you all some few guidelines that i would like to add is you need to be very consistent as i have already mentioned in my uh, youtube lectures or those who know me personally you need to be very consistent with the course you need to take some time out okay and this is your time like for example in a day if you are comfortable with studying at night or maybe early morning or maybe in the afternoon that doesn't matter what matters is there should be some time in which no one should disturb you this is the main thing that i would like to tell you on the first day like for example during my college days i had my college then i used to teach then i used to go to office and after that 9 to 12 pm was the time that was my time okay that was the time which i used to devote to this course so there should be something called as your time in which no one should be able to disturb you your cell phone should be kept switched off or whatever it should be very far from you and that is the it's not necessary that you study the full day you can carry on with all your college thing or whatever uh, hobbies you are having i don't care but 3 to 4 hours should be your time this is what i call as your time matlab no one should be uh, like uh, disturbing you or and you should be totally focused towards this course and this thing you need to continue for the next set of 6 years in the next 6 years you will be giving around 13 papers so this thing should be common in the next 6 years and definitely you will be getting the benefits if you are doing the course nicely you are getting good grades your understanding is good okay so cm1 actuarial mathematics talks about banking and insurance in detail okay so let me just tell you something about the paper my voice is audible all of you properly there is no problem in that okay yeah <coughs> so if you all are having any query you can just raise your hand and you can uh, type in the chat box also so if i'm teaching something and if it's not clear you all can let me know through the chat box or you can raise your hand as well okay so <coughs> cm1 is a 200 mark examination okay 200 marks examination it's divided into two papers one is paper a and the other is paper b so paper b is your excel based examination paper b is your excel based examination and paper a is your written examination like previously it was held in examination centers currently it is online it is being conducted in ms word so you all will also uh, get the training of how to use ms word efficiently for your examinations but that comes at a later part currently you should make a fair class copy in which all the class notes should be written okay so uh, like you should make two copies one is your rough work copy in which you are practicing the sums and one is your class notes copy because whatever i am teaching uh, in class is really important for your exams okay and there should be some sort of summarized notes which you can revise before your exam or before your interview okay so your class copy should be very neatly maintained now uh, by written i don't mean any sort of theory by written what i mean is 
you need to solve the problems okay like previously it was on pen and paper but currently it is being held in ms word okay so both the papers are of 100 100 marks okay but if you talk about ifoa the weightage is 70 30 okay and a weighted average score is calculated so for example you score for example if you score 80 in paper a and you score 70 in paper b so your score will be your score will be 80 into 0.7 plus 70 into 0.3 okay so this will be your score so by seeing this uh weightage the students they make some sort of false uh, conceptions in their mind that 70% of the time should be given to paper a and 30% of the time should be given to paper b it is absolutely wrong you should be giving equal time both to paper a and b okay if you, if someone is having the hidden desire that they need to score something really good in the exam they should be very good in paper b okay and <coughs> the and in iei you need to pass separately from both the exams okay so the average marks that they need is 50 so you need to score individually 50 50 in both the papers then you will be clearing cm1 as a whole but in ifo there is no as such norm but if your paper b is not that good you will not be able to clear the exam even if you score a 85 in paper a that will not be sufficient to clear the exam okay so it is like that okay so there are 28 chapters in cm1 and cm1 let me give you a brief history it's a culmination of papers of ct1 and ct5 so ct1 was financial mathematics and ct5 was contingencies so financial mathematics financial mathematics deals with the banking part it deals with the banking part and contingencies deals with the insurance part okay so today we are going to study about time value of money that is what we start with today <coughs> we are going to talk about time value of money please put the heading time value of money okay so before starting the topic let me give you a short uh, intro about the topic okay so let's say suppose let me uh, take you through a timeline okay so this is a timeline this was 50 years back this was 20 years back and this is today okay so today i am earning 20 years back my father used to earn 50 years back my grand father used to earn okay so my grandfather used to earn 1000 rupees my father used to earn 10000 rupees i am earning 1 lakh it's a hypothetical example okay there is no relation just i want to teach you some thing okay so if you see 50 years back when my grandfather used to earn he used to buy some bundle of goods 20 years back when my father used to earn he used to buy some bundle of goods like the normal household things rice atta dal uh, like the normal things which are necessities okay and today also i am buying the same bundle of goods so what observation can you see here what thing can you see here the thing which i can see here is for example 50 years back i used to obtain the bundle of goods for 1000 rupees 20 years back i am getting the same bundle of goods let's say suppose for 10000 rupees and today i am getting the same bundle of goods for 1 lakh rupees okay so what can i say about this is see <coughs> just hold on yeah. what thing can i say value of money value of money 
डैश ओवर टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ मनी डैश ओवर टाइम नाउ सी वॉट हैपन्स इज आई एम आस्किंग यू अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन इफ टूडे इफ टूडे आई एम हैविंग टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज विल आई बी एबल टू बाय विल आई बी एबल टू बाय द सेम बंडल ऑफ गुड्स मोर गुड्स और लेस गुड्स द एंसर इज लेस गुड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल If ट्वेंटी years ago टेन थाउजेंड वॉज द कॉस्ट ऑफ द बंडल ऑफ गुड्स टूडे वन लैक इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ बंडल ऑफ गुड्स एंड फिफ्टी ईयर्स अगो वन थाउजेंड वॉज द कॉस्ट ऑफ बंडल ऑफ गुड्स सो इफ टूडे इंस्टेड ऑफ वन लैक इफ आई एम हैविंग टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज सो विल आई बी एबल टू बाय द सेम बंडल ऑफ गुड्स लेस और मोर द एंसर इज लेस वाई because value of money or purchasing power of money has decreased over time okay the purchasing power has decreased over time okay so if today i am having 10000 rupees or 1000 rupees i will be able to buy less of goods because there is inflation in our economy okay there are constant rises in prices of goods okay so what can i say value of money decreases over time because today if i am having the same money which my father or my grandfather used to earn i will not be able to buy the same bundle of goods i will be able to buy less amount of less 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 goods okay so the value of money decreases over time now let's take another example okay to and now now i am just giving you a feeler now i'm not letting you write anything you don't need to write just listen so this is time 0 this is time 10 today i borrow 50000 okay so someone has lent me 50000 after 10 years okay i am repaying back to the person 70000 okay the extra 20000 which the person is getting the extra 20000 which the person is getting is known as interest and why do we pay interest because value of money decreases over time okay we are paying this extra 20000 to the person to compensate for the loss in the value of money why are we paying this 20000 to compensate for the loss in the value of money same example same example let's say suppose if you are buying some bundle of goods here okay and with this 70000 you are able to buy the same bundle of goods then it's okay then it's okay but if i am repaying only the principal part which is 50000 if i am repaying only the principal part which is 50000 then what will happen will that person be able to buy more goods less goods or the same bundle of goods the answer is less amount of goods why because purchasing power has decreased over time okay value of money decreases over time i am able to buy less amount of goods with that money okay and that is why we pay interest to compensate for the loss in the value of money that is why we pay interest another reason for paying interest is the risk factor i have my money if i am giving my money to someone there is a risk factor associated what if the person doesn't repay me back the money then what will happen so there is a credit risk associated with money why do the banks they charge interest why do banking companies they charge interest because because it is the people's money what is the function of a bank what is the function of a bank bank takes deposits from persons at let's say suppose 5% interest and it gives loans at 10% interest okay the difference is the margin of interest that the bank is earning less the operational expenses and everything so bank is sitting on huge credit risk what if 
the person doesn't repay back the loan to the bank the bank still needs to give the money to the depositors or or else the bank's reputation will be at stake or else bank's reputation will be at stake okay so there is a credit risk associated with money okay if my money i am lending to you if my money i am lending to you i could have invested it somewhere for example i invest my money in nifty 50 i invest my money in nifty 50 nifty 50 is an index of top 50 companies in india it represents the top 50 companies of india and it is indian index like it represents how india is performing for example if the top 50 companies of india are performing good this means what india is on whole improving okay so if i invest my money in nifty 50 i will get some return from there but that money i am giving it to you i should get something in return okay so that is interest money has an opportunity cost if not you then someone else if not someone else then someone else okay so money has an opportunity cost there is various uses of money i am deferring my own consumption my current consumption i am deferring i should get something in return by consumption i not only mean spending the money buying a pizza or going to movie no by consumption i mean i am investing it somewhere so if that money i am giving you as a loan i should get something in return if you see interest it is a cost thing from economics point of view the land owners they get rent labor they get wages entrepreneur gets profit and the capital owner gets interest okay so the first question which you all need to know is yes piyush <laughs> No no I'm not talking about interest in nifty 50 I'm just giving you an example of the alternative uses of money which I could have used but I've given it to you as a loan Okay so for example I could have invested it in nifty 50 or gold or government security I would have got the return na but I am giving you that money for your consumption like for example I have purchased a new center Okay I have taken a loan from my friend his name is Ayush so Ayush has lent me 7.5 lakh rupees okay what has Ayush done Ayush could have invested that money in mutual funds in gold in government securities okay but Ayush has deferred his current consumption and given me the money as a loan so I should repay Ayush something extra and that extra is known as interest Okay so please write down first question why do we pay interest sir yes sir to alternative to investing so that other should not give this to alternative yeah definitely what if you give someone a loan of 1 lakh rupees and that person doesn't repay you back there is a loss of 100% so credit risk is also there in uh, loans na okay First question is why do we pay interest write down first bullet value of money value of money value of money decreases over time value of money decreases over time very good background piyush kalra i like it very very good value of money decreases over time next is credit risk credit risk credit risk third one is opportunity cost third one is opportunity cost okay okay just to give you an idea of the real world scenario yes yes maruf <coughs> you're not audible you need to switch on your mic and then you need to speak yes
no you you why are you paying interest the reason behind that is that you are paying something extra for example if there is no inflation mic off if there is no inflation for example 10 years ago 10 years ago i am buying some bundle of goods with 10000 and today also i am buying same bundle of goods with 10000 so in this scenario in this scenario there is no inflation okay value of money has been constant okay so in this scenario there can be some arrangements where where if i am lending someone 50000 then i can take 50000 after some point of time in this i am not at loss but the interest is derived as a uh, like as a outcome of many factors one of them is inflation like for example let's say suppose if you are why do we say don't invest your money in fixed deposit this is one of the major reasons why because if if you invest your money in fixed deposit you're going to get 5% return okay and if inflation is 6% then your returns are not even outbeating the inflation okay the thing which you will get one year before at 100 rupees today you will get at 106 but if you invest 100 rupees one year before today you are getting 105 only so you will be able to buy less number of goods less amount of goods so your so your returns are not even outbeating inflation so you need to take on some additional risk and you need to invest your money in mutual funds where you can get 10 to 12% return so that you outbid inflation also so it's not that you need to just match the rate of inflation your rate of return can be 10% if you are investing in mutual funds if you are actively investing in stocks like you don't like mutual funds you need to invest in paytm reliance hdfc then your return can be little bit higher if you want to do fatka like options and derivatives then your returns can be more higher so why how how a business grows how a business grows let's take example of a business okay let's take example of a business this business is taking loan is taking loan at 8% interest okay and is generating returns 20% per annum okay so this is good na because business is a risky thing it involves lot of risk market risk is there financial risk is there lot of risk a business faces so this is how business grows you take loans from bank and you manage the business efficiently and you generate higher returns for your shareholders or for the owners of the company okay <clears throat> what all points have you written okay okay now next yes any questions till now yes yes sure like for example your name is kaveri for example kaveri you are having 10000 rupees on january end okay so what can be your uses you can buy a gift for your boyfriend watch valentine week you can invest in fixed deposit you can give as a loan to me sir you can invest in mutual funds you can invest in gold so money has lots of uses okay or you can use it for your consumption so for example if you are giving that money to me versus for example if you gift a watch to your boyfriend he will be very happy and he will tell let's get married so it's a very good thing na or you can make a fixed deposit or you can invest in gold gold prices have risen in covid because gold is regarded as a safe haven when no investment works gold works okay you can invest in mutual funds so all these things are giving you some sort of satisfaction like in fd you are getting some sort of return in mutual fund you are getting so if you are giving the money to me you should expect some return na and that depends on my credit worthiness for example if you know me very well if you know me from the past 10 years 
then you can charge a rate of interest of let's say suppose six percent. But I am new to you. You have just paid me the money today only, so you will charge a rate of interest of twelve percent. So it depends on my credit worthiness, our relations. It depends on that, and a lot of factors as well. What is the market rate of interest going on? Okay, what is my capacity to pay you back the money? What is my past? Uh, say, uh, what is my past credit history? In the past, if I have taken a lot of loans from students and I and I haven't repaid them and I and I haven't repaid them back, then will you give me the loan? The answer is no. So basically, it has a lot of alternative uses. Okay, like opportunity cost means next best alternative. If not you, then I will go for mutual fund, which can offer me a return of ten percent. If not mutual fund, then I can go for gold, which can offer me a return of eight to. It depends on your risk appetite also. What level of risk you are uh, willing to take. If you are a very risky investor, you can go for uh, Nirav Modi also. Okay. <clears throat> so it depends on your risk appetite. Okay. So basically, deferring your current consumption and giving someone the amount of money. So you need something extra. and let's say suppose if i am taking 10000 rupees and i am repaying it 10000 only after one year then you will not be able to buy a watch for your boyfriend na after one year for example armani emporio armani watch cost 10000 rupees after one year with inflation the watch is 11000 then you will not be able to buy the watch okay next put the heading simple interest simple interest simple interest we all have studied in our class 8 or 9 i guess okay so let me talk about the tree diagram first you invest 100 rupees at the rate 4% simple interest So, after one year, you are going to get hundred and four rupees as interest. After one more year, again, this hundred will grow, but this four will not grow. If you get interest only on the principal amount, then it is simple interest. You get interest only on the principal amount, and if you get interest on interest, if there is a compounding, then it is known as compound interest first draw this tree diagram <clears throat> what formula have you studied can someone tell me simple interest very good simple interest is equal to prt by 100 and what is amount amount is basically the value which you get after some point of time after one year or after two years or after two three years so amount is principal plus simple interest okay so what can i say principal plus prt by 100 yes or no okay so principal gets common 1 plus rt by 100 now since actuaries is a very niche course we will define some notations so our work becomes easier what is principal principal is basically the amount which i invest today so it is basically the present value amount is something which i get in the future so it is accumulated value okay t will be measured in years okay and r is something expressed as a percentage and when we do it divide by 100 then it becomes in decimals okay so what can i say <coughs> p is replaced by present value amount is replaced by accumulated value <coughs> t is the time period which is n measured in years r by 100 is i in decimals okay then what does my equation convert to av is equal to pv 
वन प्लस एन आई ये सर नो अक्यूमुलेटेड वैल्यू इज इक्वल टू प्रेजेंट वैल्यू इन टू वन प्लस एन आई ओके सो ए वी इज इक्वल टू पी वी वन प्लस एन आई सी इन द होल करिकुलम ऑफ एक्चुरीज यू विल सी देर इज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग और डिस्काउंटिंग हैपनिंग लाइक फॉर द सी एम वन करिकुलम आई एम टॉकिंग सो वॉट विल हैपन इज इफ देर इज सम ऑफ मनी विच इज देर टूडे इन योर हैंड दे विल आस्क यू टू अक्यूमुलेट इट टू द फ्यूचर दिस प्रोसेस इज नोन एज टेकिंग द मनी फॉरवर्ड विच इज नोन एज अक्यूमुलेटिंग द मनी ओके एंड इफ देर इज सम मनी इन द फ्यूचर दे विल टेल यू टू पुल इट बैक टू द प्रेजेंट विच इज नोन एज डिस्काउंटिंग सो टेकिंग द मनी फॉरवर्ड इज नोन एज कंपाउंडिंग और अक्यूमुलेटिंग एंड डिस्काउंटिंग द मनी टू द प्रेजेंट इज नोन एज डिस्काउंटिंग ओके कॉपीड येस ऑन नो सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी हैव डिराइव नेक्स्ट इज कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट ओके वन मोर थिंग विच आई फॉर्गॉट इज द अदर नेम फॉर सिंपल इंटरेस्ट इज कमर्शियल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट कमर्शियल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ओके कमर्शियल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट नेक्स्ट इज कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट इट्स अदर नेम इज एफेक्टिव रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट सो एफेक्टिव रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट so let's me uh, let's first draw the tree diagram so if 100 is invested at the rate 4% compound interest this is after the first year now what will happen kangan verma now what will happen interest will be charged on the interest amount as well so there is compounding of interest so this 100 will be 104 and this 4 will be 4 and 4 into 0.04 so there is compounding of interest if the interest is charged on the interest amount as well then it is compound interest okay so what formula have you studied kangan can you please tell us what formula have you studied what formula have you studied for compound interest the formula says amount is equal to principal 1 plus r by 100 whole to the power t yes or no if we use our notations then what will it become av is equal to pv 1 plus i whole to the power n yes or no yes or no okay <coughs> what is the other name for simple interest what is the other name for simple interest commercial rate of interest if they say only interest it is compound interest okay and what is the other name for compound interest it is effective rate of interest okay the calculator which you you need to use is fx 82 es plus okay it is kco company it costs roughly 650 rupees this calculator will be valid for all actuarial examinations yes maruf you're not audible dear you're not audible yeah yes hmm uh it depends on what products you are buying okay in some of the things it is simple and in some of the things it is compound but it is written in the contract before you buy the product okay so it depends they use both the rates but mostly it is compounding okay yeah next put the heading next put the heading simple discount
सिंपल डिस्काउंट द अदर नेम फॉर सिंपल डिस्काउंट विल बी कमर्शियल रेट ऑफ डिस्काउंट प्लीज राइट इट डाउन आरुषि अग्रवाल इज इट क्लियर द अदर नेम फॉर सिंपल डिस्काउंट विल बी कमर्शियल कमर्शियल द अदर नेम फॉर सिंपल डिस्काउंट विल बी कमर्शियल रेट ऑफ डिस्काउंट ओके मानसी शर्मा जी नमस्ते फ्रॉम इंडिया शी इज अवर इंटरनेशनल स्टूडेंट सो इट्स वेरी ग्लैड दैट वी हैव रीस्ड देयर ऑल्सो सो इट्स वेरी गुड सो यस सो सिंपल डिस्काउंट सो बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग सिंपल डिस्काउंट I'll teach you what is a zero coupon bond, so that will make the concepts clearer. So, zero coupon bond. Now, what is a bond? Bond is a type of a loan agreement. Okay. Now, for example, HDFC, Housing Development Finance Corporation. So, it's not the HDFC Bank. HDFC is different, and HDFC Bank is different. They are known as twins. HDFC twins. when the sgfc bank runs sgfc will also run so they are also known as twins so if i have given a loan of 1 lakh rupees to hdfc bank in return sgfc bank is going to give me a document and in that document all the things will be mentioned Mr Praveen Patwari has given me a loan on 30th January 2022 the rate of interest will be 10% the loan tenure is 5 years and the interest payment will be made in every year wise okay so for example if it's a 5 year loan what will happen is there will be five coupons there will be five coupons in this bond so basically bond is the paper which is a proof that i have given a loan of 1 lakh rupees to sgfc okay and all the things are mentioned in this bond now what is a coupon paying bond previously what used to happen is there was no uh, uh, auto credit of interest so for example one year time has elapsed so i will cut this coupon and i will go to sgfc and i will demand my interest if i have given a loan of 1 lakh at 10% if i give them the coupon they are going to give me 10000 rupees check or cash whatever so previously that corporate term is used till now coupon paying bond now bond is a kind of a loan agreement bond is the proof bond is the certificate bond is everything for a loan giver like that is the proof that i have given money to sgfc okay now the regular interest paying bond is known as a coupon paying bond why because there were some coupons attached at the below of a corporate bond so that as and when the time matures you you take that coupon off and you show it to the company and the company is going to give you your interest okay so there were the coupons attached so that corporate term is being used till now for regular interest paying bond so a loan agreement in which there is regular interest payment it is known as a coupon paying bond now zero coupon bond matlab how many coupons or how many interest you will get zero you are not going to get regular interest payment so will you lend the money the answer is yes i'll show you why so what happens is hdfc bank is issuing a zero coupon bond at 30% discount so i need to pay 70000 today and the bank is going to pay me 1 lakh after 5 years it generally happens to cut down the regular expenses okay it generally happens to cut down the regular expenses because interest needs to be paid regularly whether you are earning the profit or not it doesn't matter so these kind of uh, like arrangements are done when the company is trying to expand and the company needs to cut down the regular interest expenses so the company will pay interest at once 30000 rupees after 5 years so this is known as a zero coupon bond or a discount bond 
in this type of arrangement the bond is issued at a discount and it is redeemed at par at par means that zero coupon bond is a certificate it will be mentioned that whoever holds this bond after 5 years is going to get 1 lakh rupees okay so what benefit i am getting i am getting the benefit of 30000 extra so three things we have learned what is a bond bond is a certificate in which all the loan agreements are written now what is a coupon paying bond the regular interest paying bond let me show you example of a coupon paying bond now let's say suppose this is 0 this is 5 i have given a loan of 1 lakh rupees to hdfc okay hdfc at the rate 10% annual interest per annum interest so at time 1 i am going to get 10000 at time 2 i am going to get 10000 at time 3 i am going to get 10000 at time 4 i am going to get 10000 and at time 5 i am going to get 10000 plus 1 lakh so this is a normal coupon paying bond the regular interest payments will be made after year now it can be half yearly it can be quarterly it can be monthly on those dynamics we will come in the coming classes but not now this is a regular coupon paying bond you have any questions in this okay the bond in which there is regular interest payment is known as a coupon paying bond and what is a zero coupon bond in which you don't get regular interest payment these bonds are issued at a discounted price i am asking you all a question answer in the chat box in this type of arrangement what will be the nominal value of the bond will it be 70000 30000 or 1 lakh answer in the chat box what will be the nominal value or the face value of the bond tell it to me 1 lakh all are saying 1 lakh the answer is correct the answer is 1 lakh why whoever is the holder of the bond will get 1 lakh rupees after 5 years now let's say suppose just 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 for knowledge purpose whether you all are understanding this thing or not okay now what do you think these bonds will be traded in the market like i am holding this bond today i have bought it for 70000 now after one year if i need the money i'll be selling it to someone okay so after one year what do you feel like will this 70000 go up or it will go down what do you feel go up go down remain same up kishan k saying up samriddhi saying up plus up it's very simple as the time period reduces the discount amount will go down okay i will sell it to someone for let's say suppose 80000 and my profit i have realized 10000 so these bonds are also traded in the market and ultimately whoever will be the holder of the bond after 5 years will get the money 1 lakh rupees which is the nominal value of the bond now what is nominal value face value there are two times there are two there are two types of things one is the intrinsic value and the other is the face value now what used to happen is you you might have seen in our indian economic coins the 2 rupees coin the 2 rupees coin and the 1 rupee coin previously it was very heavy weighted but now it is very light weighted so what used to happen is these coins valued 1 rupee or 2 rupee like for example what is the face value face value is something which is written okay and intrinsic value is the actual the metal value okay so what used to happen is this 2 rupees coin it used to get smuggled to other countries okay because it was carrying a lot of metal value whatever metal i don't know exactly which metal it was so it used to be smuggled to other countries and used it in, and it was smelted down it was smelted down and blades etc things were made valued rupees 5 or 6 so the government caught hold of this because there was a shortage of 1 rupees and 2 rupees coin so this thing should never happen in an economy because the intrinsic value should always be less than the face value or else these kinds of activities will happen so the government introduced new coin a, a lighter coin okay so what is face value a 100 rupee note carries face value 100 but is it actually 100 rupees the answer is no it's a it's a sort of paper currency or maybe cotton currency some some say it, it's it's made of cotton so whatever is the thing so it's not actually valued 100 rupees but its face value is 100 
So this is the difference between face value and intrinsic value. Okay, but now the coins which are made five rupees, two rupees, their intrinsic value is less than the face value. And if some day you find some sort of discrepancy that the intrinsic value, then the coins can be smuggled again. And and uh, and if the metal value is more, then definitely it will be smuggled and uh, uh, like whatever things they want to make, they will be making it. And they will be making more money, na? So it's the thing. <laughs> so now we need to learn simple discount. We were we were learning simple discount. So simple discount. The other name is commercial rate of discount. Wherever you see the word simple, the word commercial will also be there. So simple discount. Now present value is equal to accumulated value one minus ND. Which one will be more, present value or accumulated value? Answer me. Which one will be more? The answer is accumulated value will always be more. Why? Because value of money decreases over time. So whenever we are accumulating, we'll see some sort of plus signs, and whenever we are discounting, we'll see some sort of minus sign. So what is happening here? Accumulated value minus some percentage of accumulated value, which is based on two things. One is the number of years, and the other is discount rate. More the number of years, more the discount. More the discount rate, more the discount amount. It's very simple. So AV into one minus ND is equal to present value. Now present value is my subject. Now present value is my subject. Okay. Previously, when we were accumulating. Using interest, accumulated value was the subject. Now present value is my subject because I am using discounting. Similarly, what can I say about compound discount? The effect, the other name will be effective rate of discount. It will be PV one minus D whole to the power n. Okay. Yes, Somya. Sorry, sorry, I just missed it out. Yeah, thank you. Compound discount. The other name will be effective rate of discount. Yes, D is the rate of discount. Okay, now please put the heading: accumulation and discounting factors. Okay, so listen to me. Hundred, when multiplied by two, becomes two hundred. So I invested hundred today. And after five years, it became two hundred. मतलब it doubled in five years. So how many times my fund has grown? Two times. So this is accumulation factor. Accumulation factor means how many times my fund has grown. Okay. The notation is a zero to n. Please write it down. How many times my Fund has grown from t is equal to zero to t is equal to n. Okay. Next. Next. So next is this is accumulation factor. This is AF. Short form is AF. AF means accumulation factor. Now next is discounting factor. Now next is discounting factor, which is denoted by v zero to n. V zero to n. लिख देना. Discounting factor from time n to time zero means there is some amount of money. 
present at time n, we are pulling that money to time zero using this discounting factor v zero to n. Okay, using this discounting factor v zero to n. Okay. Accumulation factor is how many times my fund has grown from time zero to n. Discounting factor, like when we use the notation, it is zero to n only. But does it really mean zero to n? No, it means from n to zero. Okay, from n to zero. Okay, now the next thing is, can I say something like this? AV is equal to PV into accumulation factor. Okay, AV is what present value into accumulation factor, and PV is AV into discounting factor. PV is AV into discounting factor. these two equations you can copy it down what is a discounting factor by what factor we should multiply the money at time n so that we get the money at time zero okay by what thing we should multiply accumulated value to get present value is discounting factor i have written it down in words only AV into DF is PV, okay. From here, I want to derive something. Now, uh, I want to write PV in this equation. So, what can I say? AV is equal to AV into DF into AF. AV AV cut. AV AV cut. So, what can I say? df is equal to 1 by af so this is an very 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 important relationship there is a inverse relationship between discounting factor and accumulation factor discounting factor is 1 by accumulation factor and accumulation factor is 1 by discounting factor so there is a inverse relationship between the two so there is a inverse relationship between the two okay now we'll prepare a summary chart. Now we'll prepare a summary chart. See, here we are going to write, this is copied. Here we are going to write AF. Here we are going to write DF. Here we'll be calculating it for simple interest, compound interest, simple discount compound discount okay now the first thing accumulation factor for simple interest accumulation factor for simple interest so what have i got by what thing we should multiply the present value to get accumulated value the answer is 1 plus i to the power n okay so what will be the, sorry, I'm really sorry for simple interest. So it is 1 plus Ni. AF into PV is AV. So what should be multiplied with present value to get the accumulated value? Okay, so the answer will be 1 plus Ni. So the answer will be 1 plus Ni. Answer will be 1 plus Ni. Okay. Now, just now, we have studied that discounting factor is 1 by accumulation factor. So, it will be 1 plus Ni to the power minus 1. Okay. For compound interest, what should be multiplied with present value to get accumulated value? The answer is 1 plus I whole to the power n and 1 by accumulation factor is what 1 plus i 
होल टू दावर माइनस एन यू माइट बी गिवेन सिंपल इंटरेस्ट और कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट एंड यू माइट बी टोल्ड टू कैलकुलेट दी डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर इट कैन हैपन ओके सिंपल डिस्काउंट नाउ प्लीज वेट 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 प्लीज फोकस फोकस फॉर सिंपल डिस्काउंट वेयर शुड आई राइट फर्स्ट इन द डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर कॉलम और दूमुलेशन फैक्टर कॉलम डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर बिकॉज माई सब्जेक्ट वॉज प्रेजेंट वैल्यू वॉट शुड बी मल्टीप्लाइड विथ अक्यूमुलेटेड वैल्यू टू गेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू द एंसर इज द एंसर इज वन माइनस एन डी हियर इट विल बी वन माइनस डी होल टू दी पावर एन एंड नाउ वी कैन राइट इन द अक्यूमुलेशन फैक्टर कॉलम विच इज वन माइनस एन डी to the power minus 1 1 minus d to the power minus n so this is a summary of accumulation factor and discounting factor for n years for all the four things the basic things that we have studied today please first understand and then you can copy yes a uh, credit risk opportunity cost uh, value of money decreases over time yeah and one more is the cost thing like uh, you can write it down the land owner gets rent the entrepreneur gets profit labor gets wages so capital owner gets interest hmm 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 okay so we'll do one question right now please write it down yes accumulation factor or accumulated value accumulated value is present value 1 plus i whole to the power n yes so please write down the question given an investment of 1000 given an investment of 1000 so it's in euros the symbol is like this given an investment of 1000 euros calculate the accumulation after 5 years given an investment of 1000 given an investment of 1000 Calculate the accumulation after five years using given an investment of one thousand euros. Calculate the accumulation after five years using a simple discount eight percent per annum, b compound discount eight percent per annum, c. compound interest 8% per annum given an investment of 1000 euros calculate the accumulation after 5 years using simple discount 8% compound discount 8% compound interest 8% okay so now see this is basically present value we have present value we need to calculate the accumulation factors and we need to calculate the accumulated value after 5 years okay so let's start simple discount wait 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 so what is the formula for simple discount present value is equal to accumulated value 1 minus nd 
ओके वन माइनस एन डी सो वॉट ऑल थिंग्स वी हैव यन थाउजेंड इज इक्वल टू अक्यूमुलेटेड वैल्यू वन माइनस फाइव इन टू पॉइंट जीरो एट सो वॉट वी कैन डू इज वॉट वी कैन डू इज वन थाउजेंड इन टू वन माइनस फाइव इन टू पॉइंट जीरो एट टू दी पावर माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू अक्यूमुलेटेड वैल्यू दैट इज वाई नाउ यूल अंडरस्टूड दिस थिंग हियर वेन इट गोज हियर इट कम्स टू दी पावर माइनस वन कैलकुलेट एंड इन सिमिलर वे यू नीड टू डू ऑल थ्री प्लीज कैलकुलेट फॉर सेकेंड वन वी कैन से वन थाउजेंड इज इक्वल टू ए वी वन माइनस पॉइंट जीरो एट टू दी पावर माइनस फाइव Please calculate the answers. And what notation can we use here for accumulation factor is a zero to five. This is the accumulation factor from time zero to time five. Okay. One six 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 point six seven, then it will be one five one seven point two six, then it will be one seven eight five point seven one. Okay. Now the next part of the question is, please write it down. Part two. Part two. I guess I have done it wrong. This will be A B C. A, B, C. Now, part two is a payment of two thousand is due in four years' time. A payment of two thousand is due in four years' time. Calculate present value. using calculate present value using a simple interest 3% simple discount 3% compound interest 3% per annum a payment of 2000 is due in 4 years time means what it is the accumulated value at time 4 okay so we have av we need to calculate the pv so for the first one we'll be using the equation pv sorry it is simple interest so we'll be using the equation pv into 1 plus ni Is equal to A V. For the next one, we'll be using the equation P V is equal to A V one minus N D. And for the third one, we'll be using the equation P V one plus I to the power N is equal to A V. We just need to calculate P V. We have all the other things. Please calculate. the first answer will be 1785.71 next it will be 1760 and third it will be 1776.97 please check
you will be notified about your next class okay please first solve this you all will be if some of you those who have take, taken admission today only you all will be added to our september 2022 batch group okay and you all are having the access to the recorded lectures also if you are having free time you need to watch if the classes are going slow then you can watch the recorded lectures but it is a 100% live online batch so all the classes will be done live in this batch okay so yes so we'll study till here today yes maruf yes sir once we are done yes Hmm. Hmm. Please come again. I got your question. I got it. You are saying why simple interest and simple discount are not the same? This answer you will get in the next class because we'll derive the relation between interest rates and discount rates in the next class. Okay. So thank you. Thank you all of you for joining us. Thank you.